Hi everyone, and welcome to this chapter of the Free Full Stack course. In this chapter, we're going to install Android Studio and subsequently the Android SDK on Windows 11. So let's get started. I'm going to do some screen reshuffling in here. Um, and the first task that we need to take care of is to actually download and, and install Android Studio on Windows 11. So I'm going to close the screen right here. And as you can see, the address provided at the bottom of the screen, you just need to go there. And just be careful because this address might change in the future. Right now, it is the stable HTTPS developer android.com and then slash studio. In the future, this address might change and Android might, and Google actually might move this address to some other address. So if this URL doesn't work for you, then please just Google it. Just search for Android Studio and you should land on the correct page then after that. So what we're going to do in here is to go ahead and download Android Studio first. So we're going to first accept the terms and conditions in here. So let me see if I can do some reshuffling a little bit so you see the screen better. So here's the browser. Uh, there we go. And let's then go in here and press download and then scroll all the way to the bottom of the screen and then say download Android Studio Chipmunk for Windows 11. OK, this is 900 megabytes, I can see. It's, so it's quite a large file, depending on your um, connection. This may take a long time, or it actually might go quite fast. And after this file is downloaded, we're just going to go ahead and open this downloaded file. OK, so I can see in here it's downloaded. I think it's just checking for viruses. So after that is done, I just click on that uh, file in here to open it so that we can start the installation process, OK? So let's move on to the next step in here and say open the downloaded file. Uh, I'm going to press yes on that uh, security dialog right there because this was a downloaded file, an executable downloaded file. So um, I can see that our, I already have Android Studio installed on my computer. So it's asking for uninstalling the previous version and installing this version. So I'm just going to go ahead with this. So it's going to remove all my settings, and that's fine by me. Let's follow through with the installation steps in here. I'm just going to press Next pretty much on all these. And then this is going to start, start the installation process for us. So let's just wait for the installation process to go through. And then we can continue uh, with our instructions right after that. OK, I can see that the installation went through and says completed right here, though it's a little bit difficult to see it, but it, it says completed, I can see. And then I'm just going to say Start Android Studio. OK, so let's start Android Studio in here. I can see it's Android Studio Chipmunk. And then what we need to do is to go to SDK Manager on the screen. So please press this More Actions button right here. And then we're going to go into SDK Manager in order to install some required components uh, that are needed for developing uh, Flutter applications. OK, so let's go ahead inside this. Uh, as you can see, on the left-hand side, we're in Appearance and Behavior system settings, and then Android SDK. Now let's go into the second tab in here that says SDK tools. And again, these tabs might move in the future to maybe SDK tools will be the first tab. We don't know that. But please just for, find the SDK tools tab in which we can find all the components that we need to install. OK? So the first component that we need to install is called Android SDK build tools. These switches in here, are uh, they can have three states. Either they can be uh, filled, which means uh, that there is a check mark in here, meaning that this component has been installed and it has the latest version actually installed. The second state is that it has a minus sign in here, meaning that this component has been installed before, but it doesn't have the latest version installed. And the third and the last state is actually that, that there is no check mark in here, meaning that this component has never been installed before. OK, so I can see in here that Android SDK build tools for me has been installed, but there is an update available. So I'm just going to click on this check checkbox and then press the apply button and let it do its work and download the latest component and install it for me. So that part is done. Then as the next thing that we need to take care of is installing Android SDK command line tools. So let's see if we can find it in here. For me, I can see that it says Android SDK command line tools latest, meaning that I've already installed the latest version. But if you don't have a check mark in here, if you have a minus mark in here or that there uh, that the checkbox is completely empty, please check the checkbox just once. And once there's a check mark in the checkbox, please press the apply button to uh, apply your changes. 
After this, we also need to ensure that the Android emulator is installed and has the latest version. I can see here that in my checkbox, there is a check mark. So I already have this component installed and I already have the latest version as well installed. But if you don't have that, please go ahead and check this check mark and uh, checkbox and then press the apply button as well. What we need to also do is to install the SDK platform tools. In here again, I can see Android SDK platform tools has been installed. The latest, latest version is there. If not, please go ahead and install it on your computer as well. Then one of the other components that we need to install before we're done with the installation of all these components is actually the Intel uh, Haxon installer. And this is like a, a, a hardware accelerated uh, environment for um, some software that you can install on your Windows machine. It uses Intel Haxon. So it's kind of like a kind of creates like a virtual environment for your uh, software that they can take advantage of like direct hardware in, uh, interfacing. So you need to install this in order to get a better, uh, be a better performance in the Android emulator, which we're going to create in the next step. So I've already provided, actually, I've provided the URL at the bottom of the screen from where you can read more about Haxon. So I'll bring that up in here. You can see that there is a whole web page on GitHub um, provided for uh, people who want to install Haxon. And you can see that the ins instructions are like, uh, one is download Intel Haxam, and it actually talks about the Android SDK manager and that you can install the uh, Intel Haxam using the Android SDK manager, which is, I would say it's like the easiest way of doing that. So all you need to really do is just to go into the SDK manager in here and check this mark and then press the apply button and follow the installation steps. What is a little bit unfortunate about Intel Haxam is that it sometimes it might require you to go into your BIOS and like change some settings to enable virtual um, virtual environments for your CPU. And this and that is the reason that I'm not providing all these steps in this video because it's kind of impossible for me to pack all this material that's provided in this uh, screen um, in just one video. So what I suggest for you to do is just to first go ahead, please, in the Android SDK Manager in Android Studio, tick the box for Intel Haxon, uh, install Intel Haxon, and just ensure that you go through the installation process. If you get any problems installing Intel Haxon using Android SDK Manager, then you can go into this website that I provided the link to at the bottom, at the bottom of the screen. <clears throat> excuse me, and see if you can follow the instructions there. And if you, at the end of both these, cannot install Intel Haxon, please just let me know in the comment section at the bottom of the screen. I'll do something and uh, maybe ask the community to see how we can help you out. So by the end of this process, you should then have all these five components installed. Intel Haxon, Google SDK Platform Tools, Android Emulator, Android SDK command line tools and the Android SDK build tools, okay? So once that's done, I'm just gonna press the OK button to close the SDK manager there. Last but not least, we also need to create an emulator. And this emulator is something that we're then gonna use for creating our Flutter application and running it on Windows, Linux, and Mac, okay? So let's go in here, press more actions, and then we're gonna go ahead into virtual device manager. I can see that there is already a device created here. So I'm just going to delete it. You don't have to do this if you don't have a device created. All you need to do is just to press the Create Device button in here. On the left-hand side, let's just use Phone. And then we're going to use Pixel 5. Press the Next button there, please. For our uh, SDK, we're actually going to use S in here. So if you don't have S download already, you just need to press the Download button in here, which is then going to download that particular uh, system image for us. And at the end of this, then we should have uh, the SSDK already installed and system image uh, available for us so that we can create our emulator using that. So let's just wait for this process to go through, and then we can continue the video after that. OK, I can see now that the process has gone through, and this system image has been successfully downloaded and installed on my computer. I'm going to press the Finish button on this dialog. Then we're going to use the SSDK in here, the system image, uh, on API level 31. Press the Next button in here. And all you need to do after this is just to press the Finish button. So now you have an Android emulator uh, created for you and ready to be used when we actually go and do our Flutter application. That was really it for this chapter. But in this chapter, you should now have uh, Android uh, Studio and Android SDK and an emulator actually installed on your computer. And these may not be so significant right now, but they'll be significant as you'll see 
later when we start developing our front end with Flutter. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this chapter and I'll see you in the next one.